Warning, the following article contains adult content that may not be suitable for all viewers, including graphic depictions of blood, gore, and mutilation of body parts, as well as non-consensual sexual acts. Proceed at your own risk. Item Number SCP-3099 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-3099 is currently kept in a standard small item secure locker at Site-78. Testing on human subjects has been limited to the quota set by the Ethics Committee, currently at 6. Further increase of the testing quota must be requested from the Site-78 Ethics Committee Liaison Office. Description SCP-3099 is a VCR tape recording of the vintage pornographic film Debbie Does Dallas, recovered from the Mr. B adult video store located in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. It differs from non-anomalous copies of Debbie Does Dallas in the inclusion of an entity designated as SCP-3099-A. SCP-3099-A is a humanoid figure clad in a soft white suit or costume with a spherical headpiece. SCP-3099-A will appear on screen midway through the first scene where sexual intercourse takes place, identified as after 9 minutes and 52 seconds at the beginning of the group sex scene in the shower, crawling out of the ventilation grate on the right side of the set. The actors and actresses within the film do not appear to notice SCP-3099-A's intrusion and will carry on their activities undisturbed. SCP-3099-A will wander around and occasionally squat down to inspect the actors and actresses, and proceed to leave the set at the end of the scene. SCP-3099-A will then appear in various sets throughout the remaining scenes of the film in the background. It occasionally indicates impatience through its body language. At times, it appears to show curiosity towards props on the set, picking up and inspecting them, though it always takes great care to replace them in their exact positions afterwards. During the final sex scene of the tape, identified as a point after 1 hour 5 minutes 54 seconds in the film, as the actors start undressing in the bookstore, SCP-3099-A will seat itself opposite the persons participating in intercourse. It will then proceed to rub its hands on its face in a circular motion. After 22 complete rotations of its hands, its body will convulse, then remain limp throughout the remainder of the film. Individuals who view SCP-3099 for the first time with the intent of using it for sexual gratification will, at the end of the film, spontaneously achieve orgasm and enter a cataleptic state. Visual, oral, and tactile hallucinations are commonly reported during this state ranging from the mildly disorienting to extremely distressing. Affected subjects exhibit symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, occasionally accompanied with an acute aversion to touch and the color white. While other effects have been theorized to occur see subject files, they have not been observed under controlled test conditions. SCP-3099 was obtained by Agent L. Min on July 1, 2005, following tips from the Amsterdam Police Department investigating a recent string of bizarre sexual assaults on men. A connection to the Mr. B store was established by Agent Min, leading to the eventual discovery of SCP-3099 and its latest victim. In all, a total of 29 individuals were suspected to have been affected by SCP-3099. All but one have been located. Addendum Subject Files Truncated For full list, consult document 3099-C3 Subject Profile Jan Peter Rutgers, age 27 Freelance Software Programmer Single Date of Exposure June 11, 2005 Comments Subject was reluctant to engage in conversation and shied from physical contact. Signs of recent light bruising on left elbow, both knees, and inner thighs. Subject reported finding themselves in a room with bright lights approximately halfway through viewing the film, but could not recall much else until their discovery by paramedics on the floor of the video arcade seven hours later. Subject was coerced into registering for post-trauma psychological counseling and is currently undergoing observation under a local Foundation-affiliated mental health clinic. Subject Profile Mathien Zwersen, age 47, unemployed, married with no children. Date of exposure, 
June 16, 2005. Comments. Subject behaved agitatedly when approached by Foundation personnel. While initially reticent, he revealed upon further questioning that Agent Min's white-colored jacket was making him feel highly uncomfortable. Subject relaxed and became more talkative when the jacket was removed. He reported that he had fallen asleep in the video booth at around 4pm, but could not remember anything after that. Agent Min noticed traces of white powder around the subject's lips and fingertips. Subject could not explain origin of white powder. White powder was collected, examined, and identified as polycarbonate dust. Interviewing personnel were unable to voluntarily register the subject for Foundation observation. Field agents are recommended to conduct routine covert observation. Subject Profile Ayub Hadani, age 35, security officer, married with three children. Date of Exposure June 21, 2005 Comments Subject was unconscious and had been hospitalized at VU University Medical Center for three days upon discovery. Medical report indicates severe penetration wound through left eyeball by a blunt object measuring approximately 4 cm wide and 10 cm long, mild septicemia, as well as various bruises and grazes to both elbows, knees, and inner thighs. Subject's wife was unwilling to volunteer further explanation as to her husband's whereabouts, insisting that she would only speak to law enforcement authorities. Subject expired two days later on June 29, 2005, due to cardiac arrest after a 5 cm wide cluster of white polycarbonate dust and seminal fluid was forcibly inserted into subject via his central venous catheter. Security cameras could not capture the attacker due to being cracked and non-functioning. Subject Profile Gregor Saxer, age 44, bartender, single. Date of Exposure June 30, 2005 Comments Subject was found unconscious on the floor of the B1 adult video arcade by local authorities. Subject exhibited similar injuries to other exposed subjects, as well as extensive sweating and elevated body temperature. Upon triage, a 10 cm wide sphere was found embedded in subject's lower abdomen. Subject was immediately transported to Site 78 for medical treatment and observation. Refer to Incident Report 3099-20056302-02. Addendum Incident Report 3099-20056302-02 Two hours following recovery, subject Gregor Saxer began to undergo a series of abdominal muscle spasms. The procedure to remove the sphere lodged in his abdomen was put on hold. Five minutes later, a circular mass expanded from within the subject's lower abdomen, followed by the subject's skin rupturing and a large mass of white material resembling SCP-3099-A's head emerging from within. Thick white tubes of the same white material then emerged from the wound, extending to form the remainder of a humanoid body. This caused severe damage to the subject, separating his torso from his abdomen. The subject expired shortly after this event. Upon seeing the remains of the subject, the entity appeared to be highly distressed, kneeling down and rubbing the subject's separated body parts against its face. It then proceeded to grow a tube of white material from the middle of its chest and thrust it into the subject's severed torso repeatedly. At this point, Dr. M. Manuel drew his concealed pistol and fired six rounds into the entity's head. Upon being wounded, the entity ceased all movement and fell limp. Personnel present report hearing a sound similar to a mix between human sobbing and a deflating balloon. Following standard protocol, an autopsy of the entity was conducted. It was found that the body lacked musculature or skeletal structure, being composed entirely of silicone. Its interior consisted of a series of spongy sacs filled with a mixture of seminal fluid, lacrimal fluid, and polycarbonate dust. It is believed that the entity was able to move by expanding and contracting the fluid-filled sacs in its body, in a manner similar to spiders. Contrary to expectations, SCP-3099-A continues to appear in subsequent playbacks of SCP-3099. Aside from six small adhesive bandages on its head and a slight sluggishness in its movements, its appearance and behavior remain unchanged. 
Its means and motives for physical manifestation remain unknown. Thank you guys so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to level 4 patrons Lesby Friends, Alexis the Great, Everborn, and Joe Light. And a huge shout out to level 5 patron Doomsday LLC Prince and Design, and level 6 patron Totally Not a Femboy. If you would like to see your name at the end of my videos, see my videos early, and get some other cool perks, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description.